Phil Guyman here, former pro cyclist, and my lovely and funny wife. Uh, commentary on the Netflix Tour de France series. Just a reminder, this show is not endorsed by Netflix. We have none of their footage or none of the rights to that. This is week two, um, and I thought, because you know you might be on week four, whatever. So I thought we would start this with a two-minute summary from Emily. Go. Okay. Um, wow. Pressure. You were born. I was... <laughs> This was an no, idea but then I from. I forgot. This, I forget everything. This is an forgot. idea from someone who who DM'd <laughs> me, and I was like, I like that. Uh, um, that's okay. I'll help you. So the first episode was the was the time trial, the prologue time trial, and then stage one, and now we're on uh, we're on what? Where did they start? Stage three? Was yeah, they started the stage, stage three. three. Like, yeah, it's the fine. The cobblestones and the north, well, it's, and they it, freaking they're it's hell. It, they right? did the hell. So the north, I was right. already like, welcome to hell, really, guys. This is. <laughs> The Hell of the North is, that's what they call Perry roubaix That isn't actually drama. That's sort of like lingo. Okay. So we'll, we'll, let, we'll let that go. But I, but I will get into the whole, like, these are gladiators. These are 135 pounders. <laughs> but, um, and, and to your point of not knowing where we're at, because there are some throwaway stages kind of from a, from a storytelling perspective. The, the, you know, we call those sprinter stages. But bummer for Dylan uh, Grunewagen, who won stage two, in a sprint, and not only did they not get into the dynamics of stage stage two, they even mention who won. Which again, like I don't know, if, are you are you summarizing the whole thing? Are they doing like a you know ESPN? Uh, here's the here's the score. No, I guess is the answer. That's what we learned. Is that they're they're just gonna they're gonna choose what their story arc is and ignore whatever they I don't. See. But but again, huge bummer for dude who won that stage. Yeah, but you know what? I feel so much better that. I just forgot something. Didn't forget yeah. something, or you know. Um, anyway, okay. So, so they did the they did the the Roubaix yeah stage a lot of cobblestones. Mm-hmm. Um, they did, this was really covered just two more stages. They just picked two more stages because there's Wout won the first part, and then they 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 quickly got into the Hell of the North. But there was the stage that Wout won because he did the wings. Yeah, thing. that God, that was that felt like two seconds of the whole. It, yeah, though. that was the thing too. Is they I really blew by that? About it. Yeah, but they did that. So that sort of built up the. The sort of, the sort of cooked. I think uh, will Wout work for his teammates or will he be selfish? Dynamic, which they always try to play up in the tour of, of like, you know, one guy's job is to help the other guy, and then here's the thing where, uh, you know, Wout is so good he dropped his guys on a climb on stage three, uh, and then they kind of interviewed uh, Jonas and just like, you know, he should have waited for. He probably he probably should wait at that point. But it was one like it was a few k to go, and he wanted to win a stage in the yellow jersey, and that's kind of okay. But they do the they do the hey uh, is is this guy going to work for me or should I be working for him? There's there's always that that plays up really hard in the during the tour kind of thing. So Netflix is leaning into that a little bit, and of course Wout was going to work for his teammate. He could win maybe half the stages, but there's only one stage where he has to lose half an hour to crazy mountain people uh, for that to be obviously how the pecking order is going to go. Um, but that was the point that they they slid that in anyway, and then it was and then it was forty minutes of of the Roubaix Hell of the North element. Yeah. Um, okay. So, what were your thoughts on that? It just took me back to when we did like four blocks of cobblestones in Bucerias, <laughs> and how miserable I was in those right. four blocks. And right. These okay. Poor guys, and I know they're going so much faster, so they probably feel a little lot less. But if you go to ride the Roubaix stage. And a lot of people do. Like, you're just riding zone two. There's no drafting for the most part, like when they do the fondos or when you're just checking it out. And it does it does beat you up. When you're going at speed, when you're flying into them, you're the the it's absorbed by the speed. You're not feeling every single one. Like, it's definitely bumpier than the pavement. But the harder part is the in-between the cobbles, uh, the position fighting. But the cobbles are, are smoothed over by the speed. When what's-his-name's... They switched the whole ch- switching bike drama because his chain dropped. Yeah. Can you explain why chains drop? I assume it's just the bouncing around and and is yeah. that common on cobblestone? The the yeah chains can drop from from anything. This is an opportunity for me to make fun of Stram, but the internet's tired of that. Um, <laughs> and but he was on he was yeah. on Durace that year. They were on Shimano. Chains just drop. It's it's kind of right. like you know the the it's shadow it's it's rattling around. You switch gears. You're like you're knocking it from one cog to another and if it misses by a tiny bit and there's a little bit of leaning and a little bit of bumping and then yeah. you know, there's a torque on it uh there's no there's no version of of there's nothing a mechanic can do to keep, keep a chain from ever dropping but there's the amount of experience where like a good rider 
can usually you can pedal it back on either direction with a little bit of patience and a little bit of finesse. Um, it happens. I, yeah. That that was definitely a moment where where Jonas. I I remembered that they had a bunch of drama and there were some funny photos of just like Jumbo Visma riders everywhere and off their bikes and on the wrong bikes. Um, I forgot when when Jonas. The the first it looked like at least the way they edited it it looked like the first issue was him dropping his chain and instead of pulling it back on getting on a teammate's bike uh, rather than just fixing his chain. That was that's why I asked the question about why do chains drop and how common is it because I you would think that if it's it can happen and it can easily happen right. for the most part. Uh, why weren't they more? prepared for that situation well you like can't literally i was yeah. laughing when they switched the bike i don't know anything yeah. about racing but i knew that that was <laughs> to be kind of a dumb idea to be fair to be fair to him they a lot of times they have like a chain catcher uh on the on the bike and and a lot of times a chain catcher works i guess there's no way to know how many times a chain catcher keeps it from dropping uh but when it doesn't work what happens is you're torquing the chain it bends the chain catcher so now the chain is stuck under the chain catcher and and what happens in that case is the chain catcher actually just keeps you from being able to pedal it back on. So he might have had okay. like a, a sort of disastrous chain dropping, but that is like an off the bike situation. So he might not have known how severe it was. Either way, if you're five foot seven, five foot eight, you don't get on a guy who's six foot one's bike. Um, and, it was and that the thing moment is, when I actually right. had fun watching <laughs> racing. It's just and what? The, the problem there too is there's also, is, can they be prepared? Especially in Roubaix, in the Roubaix course, there's dudes everywhere. There's team cars everywhere. So, like, on the roof of the car, they probably have the the most important riders. They have spare bikes on the roof, and the spare guy bikes are measured for each guy. And for sure they have, like, the top GC guy. It's it, His spare bike is just a copy-paste. Like, it's all set up for him. And then... Uh, and then they'll have wild spikes, so it's kind of by priority. The most important guys are farthest out, so they have easier access to it on the roof. Um, but you know, who knows if that's the right? You know, there's there's a car, a team car, and there's B team car, and God knows which group. Like they're all trying to figure out where they are. Okay. So he he might have just been like his bike might have been right there, but he doesn't necessarily know that or trust that. Definitely like a moment of panic and a bad decision in a time of holy crap, my rivals are riding away from me. Uh, so I, 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 I get it. I had this thought also, which is a nice little segue. Thoughts Aren't by they, Emily. Isn't it, thoughts by Emily. Mm-hmm. Isn't everybody mic'd up? No. Why do I see things on certain During radios? Race, oh, so those are the race radios. So yes, okay, sorry. They are mic'd up, but those are not for Netflix. Can okay, the cars talk to the team communicate car? yes. and say, or vice versa, you know, is there communication to say, make this decision instead of that one because we have your bike right behind you or I don't know. A hundred percent. So yeah, there's, there's a, when you get a flat, you're on the radio, like this is, this is Phil. I have a flat tire. Uh, and then wherever the team car is, we'll say like, okay, we got you go back to the thing. And we're, uh, yes. Um, it looked like he was probably off his bike before he even radioed. You're right. You're right. But to be fair, I mean, they could have been mic'd up for Netflix (laughs) at least like, Yeah. That's what they, they, honestly, they should have been. A lot of cussing if they were doing that. That'd be some, that'd be a NC-17. Yeah, so uh, they can hear all the, at, the guys riding in the cars, are they coaches, directors, mix? Who, what do you, who's that? <laughs> yes. No, they're directors. They're, it's, okay. there's a, in each car, there's a director, um, maybe two directors, and then there's a mechanic. Okay, so, so the riders can hear every time there's a crash or something, they can hear them go, oh, bloody fucking hell. And, like, and then <laughs> no, the it's not, like, oh, great, dad's mad now. It's not always on. The the radio is on whenever the oh, whenever like the director talking. exactly that's how it's set up. Cool. So when when the rider, if you want to say something to the director, you hit a button, and then the the director, vice versa, if it's like I want you to know this, like here's a time gap. Here's what, so the, you only okay. know what the directors tell you to know, and and vice versa. Okay, that's yeah. nice of them. Yeah. Oh God, it'd be it'd be <laughs> brutal just to hear the. I mean, because they because the directors also have they have a race radio, so they're hearing over their radio speakers. They're hearing the information from the race of the time gaps and then they choose what to relay forward uh and then and then the riders cut in with whatever drama they've got going on um we got more into context some of the comments from last week uh sort of explained uh prude home not use not speaking in english uh and there is i'll, I'll give them some the a lot of the, the riders speaking their own language roblox spoke uh great english and he was interviewed in english if all the riders spoke the native language it'd be 18 languages, which is kind of cool because that's how international the sport is. So I sort of like that. 
Um, but a lot of folks recommended, and this might be useful for other people who are watching this, this series, a lot of folks recommended that you turn off the, the dubbing and read the subtitles. Um, personally, I don't watch TV to read. I, I, do, I do like to read, but I'm not, I'm not doing the subtitles. I don't know, that, that always bothers me. So I'll, I'll rather just listen to the, whatever the translation goes on. Also, uh, Sylvain, I, I did look him up, cyclocross racer, like certainly very accomplished road racer. A, a couple of comments were sort of mad at his choice too. I sort of point out that it was an odd choice, but I'm not sure who they could have picked to, to be kind of the man in the studio. Um, but there were folks who were saying like, yeah, you know, he's, he sucks. He wasn't very accomplished. And I, I push back on that as far as if you only choose people who won Tour de France stages to comment, A, you know, you can, there's plenty of journalists out there who are quite experienced and know what they're talking about. And B, sort of from certain decades, you're only going to have, uh, you're only be allowed to have dopers giving commentary <laughs> if, if that's the thing, which is kind of my beef with how NBC and Eurosport handle it. Um, and, and as I was like, oh, I'm, gl I'm glad they have him in there instead of one of those guys. And you see David Miller. <laughs> but then you see like Miller's good at, he's, he's good on camera. He's, he's good at explaining things. He explains sort of, they, they do have to do the thing. It's, it's tough when you talk about psych. I remember this from writing a book. Uh, you know, when you're writing, when, when Penguin is your publisher and you're writing a book, you, they don't want the niche cycling audience. Netflix doesn't want the, just people who watch the Tour de France to watch this. They want, uh, well, they want you to watch this. They want my mom to watch this. It's not, my mom has no idea Netflix is doing Tour de France series, but, uh, so they're, they've already, they're in trouble with that one. But, but my point is they still have to explain because bike racing is so complicated. There's the green jersey, there's the yellow jersey, there's, there's the cumulative time. They have to kind of do this dance of let's explain this to people who have no idea what they're watching, but not so much that like, I'm going to turn it off because this is not for me. Yeah. That's sort of like an impossible thing that cycling has to deal with. But so they had, they had Miller come in and do the here's describing it to the aliens uh, part. Uh, they had a little bit of, of bus footage from from Jumbo Visma, from uh, sorry, from Jumbo Chumbo. Um, I don't want to cost poor Chumbo has spent a lot of money. Did you see? Did you see Fluffy hair? His hair is so good. It's good but, hair. What, what product do he use? What product do I? Oh, if he doesn't have a sponsor for that, he's he's gunning for Marcel Kittle's Alpecin deal. That's what it is. <laughs> That's what it is. Kittle came out and and it got complicated for Alpecin because he had Marcel Kittle had great hair. Um, What's his name again? Marcel Kittle? No, 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 Floofies. Oh, Floofy. Uh, Wout Van, Van Aert. If you're watching this or listening to he this... He is no way. Please. <laughs> no. I just want to know what product you use. That's all. Maybe they get into that at the end. He does... If, Maybe it's in the if he doesn't have a sponsor for that, he should, and he will by next season because of this. Cool. And as shown by... He had a couple smart... When he won the stage, he did the wings thing. I wonder if he had a bonus from Red Bull for that. Oh, that's interesting. And then he did another line to the journalists of, of the, the yellow jersey gives you wings, um, which, which honestly could be a breach of his Red Bull contract. Yeah, that's how many, what I was thinking. How many places can he get wings from? Does a survival yeah. bicycle give you wings? It's supposed does, to be Red Bull uh, that gives you wings. Does a laser helmet it's not give you the wings? freaking yellow jersey. Okay. Yeah, I'm I wonder. pretty sure that's not a thing. I bet he got a bonus for doing this from Red Bull, and then he got fined for saying he got wings <laughs> elsewhere. They did some at-home footage with Wout, speaking of Wout, which I liked. Uh, they, they breezed past it, and, you know, this is, this is, I'm a little bit biased. I want more, did he have a dachshund? I think it was a dachshund. I need more dachshund content. I think, I think it was. They also showed him making a, what appeared to be a latte, and I saw him doing the thing. I want to see how that latte art come out. What did he draw? Was it a heart? Was it a flower? Oh, oh, oh. Um, Phil, was it, was it a, a Red Bull with wings? <laughs> Man, if he did that, you think how much? He did a wing latte. He should a wing art. If if that that should be no, well that's he wasn't drinking. A, I bet. I wonder if he was not if he's allowed to drink a latte with his Red Bull contract because <laughs> oh, that's a so well, that's a questions. caffeine conflict. <laughs> wow, send us your contract. We'll make sure we make sure everything's all for sure. Good that's legal. legal. <laughs> yeah, and he was a, he was a serious wrecking ball uh, at this tour. I kind of forgot the level of of that of uh, second in the time trial and then second on the first sprint and then won the third stage and then the fourth stage they're like is he gonna wait for me on the cobbles and but of course of course he did once you take a teammate's bike and he takes your bike and then there's a team car and there's a bike switch now they have two bikes to get off of the roof for the other guys a real shit show that really was a shit show but then wow it's just like in the ridge like hang on what happened okay i got this i'll just i'll just wait five minutes and then close a four minute gap uh and and not give a shit 
And it shows at the same time, it shows uh, Pogachar on the front on a cobble sector, on the front in the last couple K, which they, I, I wonder if they're going to have any access to that team and, and their tactics, their plan. But this is sort of, this gets into what happened really weeks, weeks one of the tour. Uh, and I think into week two of Pogachar, uh, really burning a lot of energy. It's one of those, like, he got 21 seconds that day from probably, like, drilling it for an hour on the hardest stage. Like, and I, I'm guessing he hoped he was getting a minute out of it. But where were his, like, his teammates should be doing that work. There should be, like, they should have had some brute Belgian dude to, to go to the front and pull him around the cobbles. Because either way, like, Vingo panicking, making up time, but he's got a teammate doing it for him. So he's getting rest, and Pogachar is, like, gaining time, cool, awesome, but but firing off a bullet. My feeling of the way he raced this this tour was he thought he was going to win it by half an hour and and he was he was really going for it uh every day. I thought I thought he was not conserving energy for it being stage 3 on a stage that doesn't suit him. Um when if you're him he's got to think he can take 5 minutes on a mountain top later. There's a couple shots where Wout is on the front drilling it for for Jonas and on his wheel and maybe two wheels behind him you see the face of Garrett Thomas who Garrett just did incredible. You don't even you barely notice him, which was probably by design. Uh, Garrett was in that race and just quiet and not discussed for for quite a while. But using Wout and Jonas to you know, like he made the same whatever mistakes he did. He was in the wrong group too, uh, and and everyone just sort of forgot. Everyone decided it was a battle between Pogachar and Yumbo Visma, and and Garrett's just like sitting back there, nose breathing uh, with Pidcock there to help him out. But I don't think he had to do any work. Uh, that was all. Uh, Yumbo Visma's problem, but that's going to be in his favor in about two and a half weeks. <laughs> uh, Garrett's just licking his chops like, yeah, youngins, you guys, uh, you guys race each other, and uh, I've done this before. Uh, there's still been no showing of, of Soigneurs and that angle of it. I'm, I'm hoping they're going to get oh, to yeah. that. Uh, they also, they, they don't interview a lot of riders. They interview, uh, the, there's, there's directors, uh, obviously they had some, some wowed in there, but there's not a ton of Riders talking at camera, and I wonder if like like during the race, you're not getting 15 minutes with any of those guys in their hotel room. Like that's the exclusive part that would have to be banked before or after. I'm guessing that'd be really. It's just it's crazy how busy that like a five hour stage, and then there's a two hour bus ride, and then you've got your massage and your food and team meetings, and the, yeah, they don't they're not going to allow a whole lot of media into that mess. These guys are you know they show the drone shots or whatever of them riding, and there's some really beautiful places and. I mean, and I know I yeah. asked this in the last episode, but I mean it differently. I You're mean, looking, like, are they enjoying yeah. the scenery? Are they actually, like, enjoying their ride ever? Not during the Tour de France. So... <laughs> in, in a, in a, in a, on a training ride, like, yeah, you stop to take a photo, you look over your shoulder, that part's fine. Like, not during an interval, but, like, endurance days, there's plenty yeah, of okay. bandwidth to look around. Yeah. The, I think a lot of reason that the Tour, and I don't know if this is, like, a, a dirty secret from the Tour, if they want to admit this or not, a lot of folks, like in Europe and France or, or whatever, if you have the TV, the tour on all day, a lot of like, it's just on at bars, on at restaurants. And I think in a lot of cases, it's not even, uh, it's, it's background noise. It's like how we have, we have CNN on here telling us like the world is ending. Uh, and, and there's a scandal, all that, like, that's what we have at Fox news blaring all day about culture wars. I think in Europe all July, it's just like, here's just fields of beautiful yellow daisies that, and, and some castles from drone shots, which is which is quite pleasant. But I think that's that's a when the Tour de France says we're the most watched event in the world, it's like yeah, because you're 35 hours a week on TV, uh, and no one's and people are paying attention, you know, interspersed and and maybe keeping an eye on it. But for the most part, it's like it is beautiful footage, and yeah, France is France. Uh, but but no, the riders aren't like Emily's thing lately is she'll stop and take because the, the we had all the rains in LA, she'll take the flower selfies. They don't do that during the race. I just remember you showing me pictures of a training ride. I guess were you with Stefano, and you guys stopped to pose as Britney Spears. Oh yeah, yeah. That, oh, endurance ride, <laughs> training rides for sure. Yeah, that's a separate whole thing. There was we we ride through like Britney Spears' old neighborhood in Westlake, and and there was a thing with me and and my friends uh, Jesse and Stefano. It was mostly them. I got in a couple times because it was great. We're like. Jesse was trying to get a date with Britney Spears. Boy, is this an aside. He wanted a date with Britney Spears. Uh, so what he would do is, is, and this was like peak, not quite peak of her crazy phase. I'm not sure what her, well, she had a lot of stuff going Poor on. Thing, to be fair yeah. to her. Yeah, but, but she would Britney. take a lot of, okay. Uh, she would take a lot of, I, I, 
I have empathy for Brittany. Um, she would take photos around Westlake and, and Jesse and Stefano would find the exact fence that she like sat on with her sports bra and posed. And then they would take the exact same pose and post on Instagram, uh, hoping that, and then tag her and hope she never, she never liked it. Uh, or we got, we got nothing out of that. Um, but so yeah, that takes place. I'm, I'm not gonna say that was really a hard training day for us, <laughs> but, but that, that's no harm, no foul. Okay. Like everyone. So sometimes you enjoy it. Guys, if you're, if you're doing a training hour with a world tour guy and, and you don't want to stop for coffee, he's pissed. Like put it that way. Like they're there's there's always something. They 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 know how to live to an extent and like I mean maybe the training camps they go hard, but for the most part, like the race the previous race is your training for the next race. Okay. So that's kind of when they're heads down for for no choice. Okay. Um but you can yeah, you can get the heart rate down a little bit. Where there's there's for sure uh some some espresso stops and, and snacks on the road. Alright, so that's episode two. Um they they ended it and again with a tease by Mark Matteo that was uh, it was suffering is the heart of cycling. Well, it's just it it is for those guys. I think most people want to enjoy riding a bike. That's for sure your perspective. I always wondered if if that the the fetishization of suffering. I always wondered if that like turned people off of the sport. Like the average person who's who is like maybe I'll go to the bike shop and buy a bicycle and go do like when they see dudes <laughs> covered in yes that's how most people speak <laughs> um when they see dudes covered in in soot from from Roubaix and sweating and and talking about like oh cycling is a miserable painful like I don't I just don't think that sells bikes I, I never did and uh and the amount of like advertisements that I was in to that effect it's it's one of those just like hey what if you like hey this is this is lovely you know what if yeah, yeah which I think that's Suffering just has such a negative connotation. Suffering is generally considered negative. It's Mm -hmm. challenging, I agree. Very challenging at times. Good exercise. Question a lot of things. Fresh air. Yes. Yeah. But suffering. It's a little suffering is, is inherently like, unappealing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. So we'll see. Uh, we'll see how much suffering is done, and we'll enjoy it with uh, with our couch uh, and some popcorn yep. next week. Thank you. See ya. <laughs>